This is my copy of the 2022 3LP trifold version of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins. Looking around YouTube, I see a number of channels unboxing box sets from the 2012 and 2014 issues, but not necessarily the 2022 pressing. This here is my completely unopened box. Just got it yesterday from Amazon. I'm really excited to check it out and show you what it comes with. Both of these are available now. This is an album that goes out of print for long periods of time. Original pressings are extremely expensive, costing hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Prices of even the newly out of print copies skyrocket the moment they're gone. If you're even remotely looking to add melancholy to your collection, get one of these while you can. I cannot stress that enough. I put a link in the description to this copy that I got, this box set. I picked it up on Amazon for just 80 bucks. And it's where I found the best price. In his unboxing of the 2014 pressing of the box set, Chris over at Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed, said something that I've actually alluded to before, if not necessarily here on YouTube. Melancholy is the white album of the 90s. Chris goes on to state that there are so many different musical styles on the white album. The songs are varied, a, a dynamic range of styles. You've got the pleasantly melodic and dreamy Tonight Tonight. You've got the hard hitting Jelly Belly and Zero. God, I, you know, I remember first hearing that opening riff off of Zero in 1995, just connecting with every single bit of teen angst inside me at the time. And of course, perhaps the most widely recognized track on the album, at least for me, Bullet with Butterfly Wings. Jimmy's percussion at the beginning is probably the most underrated element in the song. And Corgan screaming, like, despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. So great. I remember obsessing over the more emotive Porcelina of the Vast Oceans, the entirely catchy 1979, and the gritty power behind Through the Eyes of Ruby. Another one of my favorites rounded out the album by Starlight. You've got heavy tracks, so far removed, yet still referencing snippets from earlier albums like Gish, and even the much more shoegazy Siamese Dream like Chair of Rock. Stacked next to sleepy, heartfelt lullabies. And like I said, you just can't ignore the dynamic range on this album. So why don't we just take a look at the box set. Oh, I'm so excited for this. This is cool. And Kitty is just gonna attack this box, by the way. All right, check this out. On this side, you have the standard box set artwork. You've got the typical image here, and in a future video, I'm gonna go deeper into some of the artwork. I love how this looks. You've got the spine, which calls out Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and Infinite Sadness, and the back has the track list and an additional design there. The kitty just keeps getting in the way. This is Waffles, by the way. Aren't you just a cute little kitty, aren't you? This is just kind of a, a pull-away piece that is not really part of the album artwork, but I'm gonna keep it anyway like other people have. So there's the box set. Um, you know, I don't have a ton of box sets. When I say that, I probably have 12 to 15. Here is side A and B. You know, on, on this guy back here, these images came on the lone insert, the lone lyric insert that it came with. So it's kind of cool to see them to standalone sleeves. I love these little graphics. I mean, can't you tell? Almost makes me wonder if I should get them all on, on this side, right? On the inside, you've got these printed inner sleeves, which are kind of cool. Um, I believe they come all in different colors. This is 180 gram wax, so it's nice and thick. Like I said, it's pressed to four discs, so it's not quite as compressed as this, and I'll touch on that a little bit later in this video. You know, each spine is a different color, and I'm kind of surprised they didn't align it. The color of the inside of that is similar to the color of this one, yet this one is the red one. So 
kind of interesting there. Just an odd observation. Here you have another full bleed print. I like it. Like, I love how these look. Oh, I just love how that looks with the graphics and the blue. This is side C and D. I'm not gonna cover what the track lists are on this particular version. It's, um, I'll have a link down in the description so you can see it on Discogs. Oh God, a cat. Um, each side has kind of similar to other ones. You've got the face, you've got the mask, and it does align with the colors here. E and F is the orange one. Here you've got the front and once again, the back, you know, it, these are all the same graphics on the back. You just have a different color, different track list, etc. On the inside, this one is yellow and the yellow label there. I just love how this looks. Disc four, sides G and H. Ooh, I love the green. That looks slick. Stumbling, XYU, we only come out at night. I forgot about that one. And you've got the bat with the hourglass there. I didn't show the cover of this one. Uh, probably one of my favorites, this kind of plain looking thing here with the birds in it. And um, the kind of inverted, you've got the light printing with the dark background. Looks really, really great. So let's take a look at this one first. This is kind of similar to what came in that guy, maybe a little bit in terms of how the design is laid out. And it's just printed on a little bit darker paper. Ooh, there you go. I love how that looks. I love the brown with the cracked kind of paper. This is the lyric book. It has, well, all the lyrics in it. Very similar to what you get with the 3 LP, though like I said, the 3 LP does have the images from the different sleeves on that. So this has all of the lyrics. Just a really nice quality feel to it. I love it. So this has the kind of the standard artwork that you find on the 3 LP version and on CDs and the like. You've got that kind of fresco-like painting, which like I said, I'll go deeper into in a future video. It's dark printing on a dark background. So you can kind of see it there. And on the inside, so this I believe has liner notes, beauty, sadness, and the best of times. So you have, you know, an essay. This is really just nice quality print here too. It is glossy, which I don't think quite sits as well as the matte. Glossy looks good, but Sometimes it doesn't have as quality of feel as some of those like high quality matte things. You've got additional artwork, you've got photos of the band, a little bit of information about each of the songs, which I really, really love. Ooh, look at that. That looks cool. I mean, that would be kind of a fun little sleeve, wouldn't it? Wrap around. You've got additional artwork. You know, this is really the reason I picked up the box set as well, one of two reasons. The other one being the audio, which again, I'll touch on in a second. So there's really a little bit of writing about each of the songs on the album, which I'm, I'm excited to dig into a little bit more and learn more about. Kitty, I said stop it. I love that old look, that old style of like book drawings. Nice giant band photo here. More art, more original artwork. Potential various pieces, I'm guessing. Um, oh, I love that. Here you have the full image of from the cover, uh, where she's now you know full body image as opposed to like bursting out of the star, uh, which is really cool. And that that will get into in my video where I talk about the artwork more, uh, which I'll be doing in the future. Hopefully not too far out in the future. You got Corgan kind of sitting there, dark piece with him, a dark photograph with him and his zero shirt. What are you doing? So there it is, the unboxing of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness box set. I'm guessing this is really, really, really similar to the 2012-2014 box set pressings. Okay, as promised at the beginning of this video, the big question is, which sounds better? Well, I obviously haven't given the box set a listen yet. Here's what I've found 
online. The 3 LP was the original format, but given the length of the album and the desire to fit the already extensive track list onto just three LPs, cut costs, a lot of compression took place. To make that happen, they pulled out some of the bass and you don't really get the full audio experience on the three LP pressings that you'd have on the 4LP and even CDs and probably digital copies. Honestly, to me, vinyl always sound better, so I'll take whichever one's on vinyl that I can find. But for a much more in-depth look at this, including a, really an audiophile level conversation about the impact of the compression, you want to check out the In Grooves comparison video of the 3LP and 4LP pressings. He goes really deep into the whole process, how it works, the audible differences between the two, and the impact that it had. Now for the box set, let's pivot to Discogs. On the 2022 pressing, user underscore zero in all caps, underscore notes that the box set, and I'll quote him here, the box set absolutely destroys the 2012 release. Beautifully clean, glossy vinyl, and zero noise. Rich dynamics and a joy to rock out to, clear but warm. He even notes that, quote, honestly, until listening to this release, I'd resided to the fact that this album was just not produced well. This has changed my mind. And that, like I said, I'm talking about the 2022 box set. And he is referencing the 2012, 2014, one of those back there, box sets, not trifold. So it appears that something is different. And, and reading all of that, I'm just really excited to dig into this box set and give it a good listen. What pressing or pressings do you have in your collection? What are your thoughts on them? Drop a comment below. Don't forget that I did put a link to where you can get this box set right now. It is about 80 bucks on Amazon. And coming up soon, I'll be digging deeper into one specific element of this album I don't see many people here on YouTube talking about. So stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. I'm in the process of doing the research and recon and writing, you know, all the R's and, you know, are sounding things. And while you wait, check out this early video of me unboxing my 3LP copy and uh, more of my sp Smashing Pumpkins coverage in, in this playlist. It's not the greatest video. I did it about a year ago when I was just getting started on YouTube, so um, bear with me there. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl channel, and I will see you next time. Waffles, you better get out of here.